Salutations, everyone. Welcome to the Crypto Truth, where I give you the truth as I see it. Um, I'm a little bit confused on my what's going on right now. I need to make sure that we are going here, and I'm not sure if we are even live. Oh yeah, we are. Hey, 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 hey. Sorry about that, you guys. I apologize. Um, Still trying to work out the kinks on this new uh, system here. All right, so first off, I want to cover a couple of things. I'm going to kind of do the same format as what I did last time. I'm really going to be making some videos, updated videos on Holochain. As you guys know, AMA is coming up. I'm going to wait until the next AMA. I believe it's either Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. So um, of, of next week, it's Saturday so of next week but we're gonna go ahead before I jump to any conclusions because I actually have some serious thoughts about hollow chain and where I think the hot token and where I think hollow fuel is going and I honestly really didn't really do a whole entire deep think about it um, until I was working out some scenarios while listening to um, while listening to the uh, live um, interview with uh, Johnny Stang with he interviewed um, the mindless cog and some things kind of came up in my mind and I'm like oh wait a second wait 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 a second so um, I'm not changing my thought process um, on what I think is going to happen everything is staying the same but there's some serious things that I want to really take a look at um, with everyone and obviously I'm going to do that after um, we do that uh, AMA after the AMA so I have um, some real intense and personal views on that so for right now let's go ahead and take a look at the market man we're above 10,000 cryptocurrency projects please 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 people do your own research market cap is at 1 uh, trillion 500 billion uh, Bitcoin dollars at 45.2 percent rose a little bit Ethereum is at 17.1 percent went down a little bit and we see Bitcoin is hovering around 37,000, uh, Ethereum at 2,300. Some of our top gainers uh, looks like uh, Cardano is still at the number four spot. Binance Coin is at number five spot. Uh, Some Coin is at number six. Uh, XRP is at number seven. Polkadot number eight. Internet Computer number nine. A USD Coin, and then obviously we have the others as well. Um, right now the market is looking totally, totally. Looks like it's in red for the most part. Um, we have some some projects here that are header hash graph. Um, you guys know how I feel about that. At least some of you guys uh, know how I feel about that. I'm not going to go into a deep, crypt, like specific cryptocurrency projects here. Hopefully you guys don't get dizzy from watching this. I really don't see too many projects actually going up. And yes, I have my reasons for skipping a couple of uh, a few that um, I did see going up, but they really don't matter, at least not to me. And if they matter to you, I apologize. So I want to go ahead and um, talk about a couple of articles here. The first one, uh, apparently the Pope from Vatican has come out against Bitcoin. This is from Reddit. Uh, crypto is really dead now. This person is um, laughing. Uh, it says flood attacks are flying from all sides. The latest to join it seems to be the Pope with his own energy FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt for some of you guys who don't know. It says he posted the following technology based on the use of highly polluting fossil fuels needs to be replaced without delay. There is a reason to hope that humanity at the dawn of the 21st century will be remembered for having generously shouldered its grave responsibilities. <laughs> Somebody joked it could be the Pope has sold all his bitcoins, is trying to buy coins for cheap for farming in the Papal Dow, uh, who from the crypto community will step up 
to help the Pope understand about energy consumption. And yes, I do agree that somebody need to step up and educate many people on, um, on Bitcoin. We're going to go ahead and we're going to be taking a look at a couple of people who are really confused, um, not just a, a, a Pope. And usually, um, you know, I don't really, I really want, actually, I, I say I don't really want to, but actually, I really want to get into uh, philosophy and religion and different things like that. But I, I, I can't do it right now. Um, not until, um, not until later. I will, uh, that, like I said, I've stated this before, it, it's going to be a very, very serious um, uh, video. And um, many people who are religious and many people who are not religious are not going to like it. Um, that usually, when both, <laughs> when both sides either uh, don't like it, it usually means that um, either I'm really crazy or I am a genius. And... Um, well, well, just hope, uh, let me just say, I hope I'm not crazy. But anyway, uh, we really shouldn't be talking. A lot of people feel like, well, you shouldn't be talking about religion and politics and, um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys, I apologize. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but here's the thing. You, you really have to understand the impact that religion and um, culture and has had on the entire world you guys really don't understand that but um it's had a, a, it's had um it's had its hands in um our the community in the world uh in um uh, uh how should i say I'll, I'll just leave it at that uh, let me go ahead and move on before i get too deep into the trenches um when it comes to religion culture and politics and many of you guys feel like uh, uh the cryptocurrency space uh, is not involved with that it is extremely involved let me tell you guys something blockchain hollow chain whatever's out there is about to change everything it is about to change everything and a lot of people don't like it so anyway uh all right i've talked about this guy before um i actually really do I listen to a lot like sometimes I listen to him on YouTube uh, he does give great advice sometimes uh, he has a lot of common sense advice right he has a lot of advice that it's just common sense I was listening to one of uh, his current videos today he was basically saying that um, he was just basically telling an individual I think the guy said he had like three thousand and some dollars and he basically uh, Dave right here um, Dave Ramsey uh, he's basically said that uh it's it's a it's a um it's a gambling like it's a it's a it's a gambling move um and i'd, I'd like to really um i really like to challenge like he's a great mind he has a lot of money and one of the things i don't like about people with a lot of money is they believe that how they got there is how the world is right so when you're older um, and you have a certain culture about you. Actually, if you guys can go back, I, I had a video on Dave Ramsey because it was when he first, um, I believe, got a question um, from about cryptocurrency. And one of the things that uh, he stated was um, he, some guy, he had like, I don't know, uh, maybe, did he have like 20 or 30? He had, he had 100, no, maybe 100,000 in cryptocurrencies but or Bitcoin. But the thing about it is, is that he was telling him to cash out and sell it right away. And this was around, around when Bitcoin was like $10,000. And if that guy had done that, he would have lost a lot of money. But that's not the point. The point is, is that there's a bigger picture here. And, and that's what I want you guys to see. Um, if we could scroll down here, uh, I, I, you guys know how I do things. I usually read the entire article, um, but I'm not. <sighs> So I will say to you guys, uh, if you guys hear me breathing heavier, it's because I'm sore. For the last couple of days, I just got into um, uh, volleyball. Um, I never played volleyball before. I really liked the sport. Didn't play when I was younger. My parents didn't really have a lot of money um, and did not really fork over a lot of money for me to play different kinds of s sports, uh, which was, I, I, it, it is what it is. So um, that's what happens when you don't grow up, when you don't grow up rich. Um, or you don't grow up um, having a lot of money, you have less opportunities. So um, it is what it is. You got to call a spade a spade. Um, that's just how you grow up. 
Uh, my parents are doing fine now. I'm doing fine now. But um, I still like to live life and I still like to play sports. So been trying out volleyball. That's another um, actually had a lot of philosophical things going into that as well. But that's more in the sports world. You guys are here to talk about cryptocurrency. So it says Dave Ramsey still not a fan of Bitcoin. Famous radio uh, host. Uh, best-selling author Dave Ramsey gave some advice about Bitcoin on Dave Ra Ramsey show last week. The self-proclaimed personal money management expert Ramsey calls himself America's trusted voice on money. He is the author, and that's the key point I want you guys to see there, money. He is the author of seven best-selling books, Financial Peace, More Than Enough, Total Money Makeover, Interdive, blah, 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 a bunch of books. Altogether, they have sold more than 11 um, million copies. Now, he has a big head. I'm going to tell you guys, he is not a very humble person. Um, I've watched a lot. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't like the guy um, or I don't like his advice. It's the same thing kind of like uh, that I have uh, with um, with uh, uh, Charles Huskins, Hoskinson. Is, um, I, I don't really like him. I don't like his personality, but I do think his tech, I do think what he's trying to do um, is a solid move. And I do think that that project will get it together and that it's going to go far, that it just is what it is. But just because I don't like someone doesn't mean I, 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 um, I'm against them. So Dave Ramsey, it's extremely clear that he's confused on um, exactly what cryptocurrency is. And not only that, but um, he, he has an older mentality. A lot of these old people, uh, let me go back to him being arrogant. Um, he, he's, uh, I guess he's, uh, he was helping a company uh, to get out of, um, what do they call those things, those... Um, uh, where you uh, buy timeshares and um, I guess uh, some people didn't like it or whatever and they were after him uh, and you know he, he said you done poked with the wrong guy he has a lot of money X, Y, and Z and um, yeah and he, you know he talks about I see Dave Ramsey going kind of sort of into the whole what's that guy name I, I used to listen to him uh, for, for, for some of you guys, I listen to a lot of people, um, no matter how crazy they are, um, because there's some advice and some there's some good nuggets that everybody from everybody in the world, not just just not just people who agree with you, but from everybody in the world. And I gain as much information as I possibly can um, to actually better myself and make myself a better human being. So if you can't if you can't take information and and and, um, and that discern what is best for you in your life. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, um, but it really will help you in your life to educate yourself, not through just school. When I say educate yourself, I don't mean just like through the, the system, but really having a little bit more common sense as well. And that's something that this guy, uh, Dave Ramsey, is um, he's, he's losing sight of. He doesn't really understand what's going on in the world. I'm gonna get into that because a lot of this has to do with culture. Uh, Ray from uh, Louisville, Kentucky called to Dave Ramsey's show. He says he asked for advice about Bitcoin investment. In late 2019, my income roughly tripled. He began telling his story. And in 2020, I got really aggressive with paying off debt. And he was able to clear off motorcycle debt, all credit cards. And last items are uh, a now a house and a car, which is cool. He also bought BTC last year. Uh, he says I bought B uh, Bitcoin and it's ballooned into this huge account now worth, uh, worth roughly $100,000. So this is the guy with $100,000. Um, he does add it in here. Uh, Ramsey commented, you've got Vegas problems. Like he's saying you're gambling. Uh, I mean, you walked uh, up into the slot machine, put a quarter in and dumped out a bunch of quarters. And now you have this temptation to think that it's a plan. The financial added that this is the problem with anything that is extremely volatile, emphasizing that the investment is unpredictable. Let me tell you guys something. Um, if this guy had to put in and I was just listening to it. Um, who was it? Um, digital Asset, um, the, the Digital Asset News guy. And he had a, a bunch of things to where he was, um, he had a bunch of charts in which he was saying if you had to put $1,000 in this or, or whatever. So if, if someone had invested in Bitcoin 10 years ago, by the way, this is a, this is a whole entire new um, currency, right? So 10 years ago, if someone had invested in Bitcoin, they would have tripled, quadrupled, whatever like it would have been insane the gains would have been insane compared to anybody's 401k stock market and everything else in between now 10 years that is not a get rich quick scheme at least i don't think it is somebody please help me understand what a get rich quick scheme is so last time i checked i don't go to vegas put quarters in and then wait 10 years later and expect to see quarters out so Apparently, he's really uneducated with how this really goes because obviously 
um, with Bitcoin and blockchain technology, yes, there are a lot of people who treat it like the um, the stock market, and that's why it's volatile because they're doing all this day trading. I mean, there's no the the ass there like some of these the meme coins and everything else in between. And I believe he made a video on Bitcoin and um. Bitcoin and Dogecoin, which you're, you're comparing Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Are you serious? Are you serious? So, in a way, if you guys want uh, some advice on not making a lot of money over time, then that that it is what it is. Um, over ten years, you're not going to make a lot of money from the stock market or 401k. The people who are usually making money from the stock market and the 401k, guess what? Guess what? Guess who? Guess who? That's right. The rich everybody else who's poor or don't have a lot of money you ain't going nowhere you're gonna stay exactly where you are so if you have a thousand dollars in the stock market right now you're like I'm put thousand dollars in the stock market if you put a thousand dollars in the stock market right now and then um, you put a thousand dollars in Bitcoin I guarantee you you will have ten years later you will have more money in your Bitcoin investment than you would in a stock market so I'm just I, I that's my own personal um, personal advice I'm not by the way I'm not a, a financial advisor and this guy actually is a financial advisor so he's a, he's a financial advisor he he um, you know he educates people when it comes to money and where does all of this money where, where is all of this money people again you know what that's it that's what I'm going to do next week I am going to have a, an extreme philosophical conversation with you with everyone about how the world works and it's gonna be it, it, it's not going to be a very pretty sight um, because this world is become has become confused we've messed it up from the past and we're continually trying to correct the things in the past but we keep making the same mistakes because we keep going into a full circle and I, I'll, I'll talk about all of that but anyway going back into this sorry I'm rambling you guys but going back into this um, oh he said the personal finance proceeded to say tell Ray Reed, he said I would cash it all out tomorrow I would have been it I would have been in it in the first place I wouldn't have been in it in the first place see this is what I'm talking about um, Ray Chai just fired Bitcoin investor I'm single I felt I could afford to take the risk I had a snowball plan for all the other items they range you could do whatever you want to do but you're asking me what I would do I would have I wouldn't have been in, in in the first place and I wouldn't stay in it I would cash it out tomorrow and I would pay the money and some common sense things common sense things he also pointed out you're sitting here explaining to me all the problems with the investment you already know what you need to do you just want somebody else to say it out loud the finance group take your fabulous income and use it to build wealth with that is a much more proven strategy to build wealth than playing volatile assets so guess what he said that um, use um use more proven strategy how do you have a proven strategy with a new currency that's just been out for 10 years and by the way in that 10 year time span or 11 years and that and in that time span it has grossly outperformed every other asset on this planet grossly so I know that many of you um, I know that there are many people who are fans of this guy a lot for relig a lot of times is for religious reasons I get into that later he does have a lot of good common sense he does when it comes to saving money but see everyone's missing the point here the point is not about saving money the point is about what he was saying building wealth you can't build um, a proven uh, yeah he said build wealth with you can't build wealth with a fiat currency that's not going anywhere and oh and by the way we all know this I looked it up and many of you guys can look this up but uh, the United States uh, uh, US dollar is about to lose its value um, it's always been losing value um, and it's gonna lose even value even faster um, not a blockchain and hollow chain and all these other types of projects are out there buying gold or buying commodities he explains or buying Bitcoin or buying currencies I mean there's a lot of volatile assets you can do options 
You could be selling short on the market. You can do day trading. There are all kinds of things you can do and occasionally make money at it. And most of the time it ends up losing it. He said most of the time it ends up losing. You want to know why most of the time people end up losing their Bitcoin? Because they sell their Bitcoin. That's why. That's why they lose. That's why they end up losing. Everybody who kept their Bitcoin and played the long game has, has become winners. Everybody. Including myself. Now, I don't have any Bitcoin. I explained why in my other previous videos I do have. But I'm telling you guys right now, the assets that I do have has benefited me in the long run. So I have no idea what, and, and by the way, you guys know I educate myself. This guy doesn't educate himself or understand that um, there's a future way of doing things. Um, he says, I have zero money invested in that type of thing. I work too hard for it, and I really don't have any desire to lose it. The government takes enough of it without me losing it well I'll tell you this right now he's half right um, he says he worked too hard for it and I really don't have any desire to lose it the government and and I don't know about him working too hard for it. Uh, maybe uh, maybe that's uh, I, I don't understand people uh, certain people in certain cultures uh, uh, work working hard means they work hard they made it uh, they worked hard for about a good six or seven years and they made it and then they get went further on in life and um, Everything is good to go. They educated themselves They put um, their assets or whatever they had into the right place and then they move forward Let me tell you guys something that's not for the everyday person it does not happen like that It doesn't happen like that in the real world We'll talk about that later because in the real world you're, you're fighting up against a whole lot of different um, variables and it doesn't matter how good hard you work quote-unquote uh, who's that guy there was a guy on Twitter he said um and and, and he on, on Twitter and he, he was telling me and I, I, I've mentioned this before but I'm gonna say it again he, he he was like well I don't you know I, I'm not a gambler so I you know I work hard for my money okay so you're not a gambler so you rather gamble with your time right so you spend 40 hours a week working in a job that you may get something from them 10 years later that you may be able to retire with oh and by the way i hope none of you guys are looking at social security in the future because it's not going to be there i'm telling you guys it's not going to be there so um i'm sorry but i rather risk my money by educating myself um into cryptocurrencies especially cryptocurrency projects that have utility than to risk my time working hard and getting nowhere because that's where the world is going right now and I, I said i was gonna avoid not not getting there oh and by the way i apologize you guys for my um my mic maybe i had my mic on too loud maybe i was talking too loud i know i was tired that night um I won't I probably won't ever make another YouTube video when I'm extremely tired I had just like I was playing volleyball and then I came back and then I went out to play volleyball and I played volleyball for like 6 to 10 o'clock and then I came back took a shower and you know yeah so I'm huge into sports I love being active in life um, my my whole life isn't glued to um, sorry for the shaking my whole life isn't glued to um, uh, to the, the, the screen all right, it says Ramsey has been a long time skeptic in December last year. He gave similar advice to another BTC investor turned 1500 Bitcoin. That's it. That's the guy who turned his 1500 Bitcoin investment to 120k at the time Ramsey thought it doubted that the Bitcoins could be cashed out calling the cryptocurrency funny money That's the one that um, that was the one I saw so apparently he needs to be educated um, I don't know if he even wants to take the time to be educated see that's the that's the kind of funny that's the funny thing is you actually have to have an open mind you actually have to sit down and you actually have to educate yourself um, and he's an old-school guy um, that complains about um, how the government is run and obviously he's he, he's he's more on the Republican side if not a hardcore Republican a lot of conservatives love him um, because of the way he faces things the way he talks about things um, some of it some of what he say is is just true i mean uh, you know it's it's not like everything somebody says is a lie but the point the the fact of the matter is is a lot of these people are not getting the point and they don't get the point because 
of how things used to be. Again, I'm rambling. I'm going back into wow, man. I got. I really got to start making a video on that. And um, so I encourage you guys. Um, please comment below if you actually do want to hear the, uh, hear or, or see a video like that because I will talk in depth um, about philosophy, about religion, about culture, um, and about money and about politics and and how it all comes together, especially in this world that we live in. I'm not really a huge tech guy. Um, I really don't understand a lot of tech, but what I do understand is the world, how it works, and why it has been working or operating for the last, I don't know, umpteenth years. All right, next article. All right, so Reuters, Iran uses crypto mining to lessen impact of, of sanctions studies fine. This is, um, I've actually stated this in the past. Oh, wow, they got some paddle boards here. I have no idea why. Um, <laughs> Uh, I actually stated this in the past around 4.5% of all Bitcoin mining takes place in Iran, allowing the country to earn hundreds of millions of dollars in cryptocurrencies that can be used to buy imports and lessen the impact of station uh, sanctions a new studies found. I don't even know why there is a, a study need to be done. That's the problem with our um, with the information that we receive. We are always, we are always talking about and thinking about things that the countries have do for face value. Look at China. Look at China talking about, oh, they're banning Bitcoin or they're doing this or they're doing that and everything else in between. Everybody's not even paying attention to what's really going on. Yeah, people don't even understand, oh, well, uh, China hates us. They have blockchain services technology. And yes, they are trying to um, endorse their digital yuan and they're not, tr they're not even trying to hide from the fact that um, they could, um, that they're trying to be a powerhouse in the world. Um, all countries want to be the best country and they're always trying to be a powerhouse in the world. And that has what it's been for an extremely long period of time. And um, yeah, so at this current level of mining, Iran's Bitcoin production would amount to revenues 1 billion a year, according to figures from blockchain anal analytics from elliptic Iranian officials could not immediately be reached for comment. U.S. imposes on almost uh, total uh, economic embargo on Iran, including a ban of imports, including those from the country's oil, banking, and shipping sectors. So I basically wanted to read you guys this article because at the end of the day, um, they are going to, they are going to um, lessen the impact of stations. That is just going to happen. Now that Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and all, you know, and, and everything else in between, they are going to be able to avoid sanctions. And this is going to be a problem um, for the United States in a way. I'm not really in charge of the world. Um, if I was in charge of the world, I highly doubt that there would be any wars. Um, and the reason being is because, yeah, I really do believe I have the answers. Um, I really do believe that. But that's for another day. We will, we will definitely be revisiting this conversation another day. All right, going into this. So I ran across this guy, um, Kitco News. Um, they were, or Kiko, however you say it. Um, they uh, were talking about Robert Breedlove, right? Um, he's a philosophy. Uh, he says a philosophy of Bitcoin from first principles, artificial intelligent podcast with Lex Friedman. I don't know who this guy is, the Lex Friedman guy, but Robert Breedlove, <clears throat> if you guys can look him up on YouTube, excuse me, if you guys can look him up on YouTube, um, he, he makes some extremely good comments. I really love what he has to say. And a lot of times, for many of you guys who don't understand this, I'm going to read this to some of you guys uh, so you kind of get what um, this guy's mindset is and, and where it is. So it says, money is a, a direct deriv derivation of action and speech, which are modes of self-sovereign expression. Sovereignty always starts with the individual, not with nations. Property is information. It's not the actual asset. It's the socially acknowledged relationship between the human and the asset. Uh, a free market is an anti-fragile system where individual failure con contributes to the growth of the ensemble. Humans are ideals and strategies competing with each other. Said differently, life is information propagating through flesh. Um... Marks, markets generate three forms of pragmatic truth, price, subjective demands of humans against the objective supply of resources, tools and innovations, entrepreneurs experiment profitability, satisfy demands, and consumers are sovereign in their demands, and virtue, lying is energy, inefficient, akin to creating and maintaining a fort of reality. 
Um, this is very, very true in, in all types of things. Lying is extremely inefficient, and but we can't really get away from it, especially within our government and within our world right now. Uh, inflation is theft. You can just print more money that everyone else is forced to sacrifice their time and energy to obtain. Did you guys hear that? Did you guys look, look, look at this? And I didn't even read this before, but I'm glad I found it because he did say it on Kitco. Um, he says, you can just print more money that everyone else is forced to sacrifice their time and energy to obtain. So the government basically is printing money in any government. Um, in, in a centralized government is basically printing money, right? So when you print money, um, you can say, hey, you know what? Uh, for example, if I had $100 and I'm print, I print $100, well, I can say, hey, you know what? I need you to work seven hours for you to get this $100, right? So what can you do in seven hours? And I'm not talking about wasting time i'm talking about what can you do in seven hours that that um would be worth more right than seventy dollars see that's that's the thing and that's why he said inflation is theft because you're telling people to work for something when you can just print it out you're telling them to work for something and it has the value that you say it is. Oh, and by the way, uh, you're telling them to work, so you, you, you're you asking them to put in a whole lot of hours. Where's your time going? What are you doing with your life? Can you spend seven hours to play with your kids, to go to the park, to go see a movie? Um, there's a lot of beautiful things in this world. Take a nice boat ride, take your girlfriend out, on a picnic, um, maybe enjoy a fair, maybe go see a comedy together. What is it? You see, during this, oh, I was getting to it. Uh, I, I really, you guys can see how I really want to start talking about it, but I really can't because this video can will be longer um, than usual. It says money is the universal medium of exchange, a technology for moving value across space and time. An extension of your mind to think about value and a form of energy that represents a claim on all other forms of energy. What does this sound like people? Again, this is why I'm a huge fan of hollow chain because I do believe um, that it will help and increase and have more security um, for having a value over space and time because really hollow fuel is really based off of energy. We're going to talk about hot. Um, after the AMA, we're going to talk about hot and, and, and hollow fuel. Bitcoin is the most superior monetary technology that has ever existed. And, and he's right. So far. So far. And really, he should say blockchain is the most um, superior monetary technology. But because Bitcoin is run on a blockchain, I guess you can say that. Yeah, yeah. It's divisible, durable, infinitely uh, portable, uh, verifiable, is scarce. Um, unlike any other money in history, Bitcoin is absolutely scarce. And a user can audit its entire supply. Um, gold's portability shortcoming is the reason banks exist. Bitcoin disrupts gold. This is very true. Bitcoin is disrupting gold. Um, and it is what it is. Civiliza civilization advances in tools. We make the way we treat each other. Under a Bitcoin standard, dominance becomes paired with competence, not coercion. And you can only earn and keep value by serving your family, family fellow man. I This is one of the things that I do disagree with. Um, you can't earn and keep your val value by serving your fellow man. However, the problem is, is that Right now, we have so many rich people who are eating up all of the Bitcoin. So all of the Bitcoin is going to be centralized into, it's like a, um, like we all say, it's kind of sort of like a Ponzi scheme. And it's not a Ponzi scheme, but it, it, it is if you look at it from a macro point of view, wherein the people who got in early are going to make millions of dollars, whereas in the people who come in late are not going to make as much. 
Now, we can have this argument if we break Bitcoin down into Satoshis, because obviously, um, if it's broken down into Satoshis and used that way, now we're dealing with a different type of thing. But at the same time, as uh, Satoshi's value increases, um, we definitely see that it can be used for everyday purchases, but who in their right mind will use um, Bitcoin and everyday purchases at the moment? We really have to wait for um, this, this currency to mature because that's exactly what it is. Uh, or asset to, to mature. Bitcoin's decentralization is enforced by the nodes who choose which set of rules can be applied. Matters just enforced. Hmm. Excuse me, guys. Apologize. Uh, enforce their chosen rule set. Bitcoin is code and code is speech. It's predicted under the First Amendment. Uh, we can, we're can we going to get into that when I talk about um, uh, culture uh, and countries because uh, we always like to talk about the uh, everyone wants to talk about the, um, uh, the the amendments, the First Amendment. I plead the Fifth. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get into that. Civilizations advances and tools we can we can make. And oh, sorry, I already read that. Excuse me. Uh, advice for young people: First, invest in and arm yourself with knowledge. Wow, really? That's what I always be telling people, right? Do your own research. Do your own research. Do your own research. Explore different sides of yourself and embrace your mistakes. This is a way to advance yourself. This is absolutely true. You know, you have to explore who you are and, and you have to attempt and try. Um, it's, it's like on Zootopia, try everything. I love that song. Oh, 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 try everything. It's really great. Um, I really do like the message of that song. You know, it's okay to fail. It's all, it's all right. You're going to live another day. You're going to breathe, except if you're failing to kill yourself, which I hope nobody is out there. By the way, um, on a serious, on a very serious note, uh, suicide has been up for a very long time um, lately. And um, if you guys have any thoughts, if anybody out there is having any thoughts of killing themselves or doing anything harmful to yourselves, please, uh, please seek medical advice or uh, mental health advice uh, because it's extremely important. I'm going to let you guys know right now, it's not, I, I've been there before and I'm not going to go too personal in my story, but I have been where you're in uh, a, a, a black hole, right? And, and the world is just sucking you in and you feel like there is no hope. But I promise you, if you go mental health, take a breather, on life and some of us don't get a chance to take a breather in life but if you take a breather in life and you look around you're gonna live another day you breathe that air and just move forward uh, it's important to always question your ideas and be open-minded learn from first principles it's very important to always question your ideas and be open-minded I don't really understand why people have so much of a problem with this um, you know, we can really help each other out in this world, in this economy, if we just, if we help each other understand um, and how to move forward in life. And lastly, I'm going to go here, and I'm sorry, I have to say this, um, because I have to. Uh, technology based on the use of highly polluting fossil fuels needs to be replaced without delay. There is no reason to hope humanity at the dawn of the 21st century will be remembered for having generously shouldered its grave responsibilities. You know what I say about that? You know what I say about that? And I'm going to end it right here. But I say, how about we become the first generation that can feed every single human being on this earth? How about, how about we do that first? Instead of, instead of talking about pollution, which is extremely important, um, we're talking about things or, or climate change, right? We're talking about things that may or may not destroy us over millions of years or hundreds, depending on how your mind works. And yet we're still having a problem feeding every child in America, every adult in America. There are people who, um, they're, they're, they work six to seven hours and they can't even get 
anything clean. They can't do anything for themselves. Um, they can't live. And yes, I will say over here in America, uh, it's a uh, it's different, right? So if you're in a third world country, you're probably looking over here in America like, wow, this is you know this is great. But let me tell you guys something. Every country has its weakness, has its downfall, and everybody in every country is not doing well. We can't control where we're born. We can't control who our parents are. And for some strange reason, while a lot of people seem to think so, we can't control our height. So um, I don't really understand why people feel like there's a need to control um, a lot of things that you can't control, but instead dedicate that time and resources uh, to feeding people, not just in, not just in, around the world, but in America as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end it right there because I can really feel myself slipping into something. Um, I imagine I'm probably going to lose a lot of subscribers. As you guys know, I am not here for the subscribers. I am here to do one and one thing only, and that's to tell you the truth, at least the truth and how I see it. I guess you can make a decision on um, whether it's uh, your truth, my truth, or the real truth. But either way, if you do your research, if you educate yourself, you'll find out. Yeah, it's the truth. Anyways, take it easy, you guys. Please, please, please be on research, be on research, be on research. Um, and above all else, stay safe out there. And please, for the love of everything beautiful, stop falling for scams out there. Please educate yourself. And do a TED Talk on Bitcoin or blockchain. Please, whatever you got to do, educate yourself. Understand exactly what's going on. Alright, I'll leave it there, you guys. Take it easy. And, um, please, above all.